All right, hello, good evening. Good evening, good evening. How is it going? Hello, let's see who's here. Christian, I'm here about AFK. Oh, okay. Bye, Christian. Uh, Ankit, hello. ODM, hello. Nephilim, hello, hello. Mr. Invicity, hello. Blue Crayon, hello, what's up? How's it going? Happy Monday. How are y'all doing? <sighs> okay, so, um, it's already another week. Whoa, ODM with the 33 thousand months. Thank you, sir. Hi from Gion stream this morning. Oh, what was it? Uh, Gion stream today. Why don't you tell me about it? I actually don't know what's happening this morning. I've been busy packing. I mean, behind me, much of it is still there because it's like the last stuff I'm gonna end up packing. But um, I've just been busy packing and stuff. So lifting a bunch of stuff and just putting things into the box and organizing them. Other than that, just just work, pretty much. Are you packing the resin in a special way? No, no, that's that's probably easy to carry. So don't need to like pack in any special way. Got you a mute during this task class, but stream saved me from sleep. <laughs> okay. Drop schedule. F1 Adux. FE edition. Oh, cool. Oh, another F1 Adux drop, huh? Interesting. Under 100? Oh. What's this? Like injection molded? That sounds like a big endeavor. You have carrying case for all your boards? Most of them. Uh, I have a bunch of 60s that don't have carrying cases. And then, yeah, there's a few boards that I don't have carrying cases for. I mean, I have some, some in sleeves. They're not like hard carrying cases, you know, Kupo. So those I just need to be a little bit more careful about. Um, Like, you know, make sure they, just, they don't like drop hard on the floor. Uh, but other than that, like if they go into like a, like a big box, it's okay as long as they're like not shifting from side to side too much yeah 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 i have i have i have some no i have a good number of like sleeves like i i used to buy those um sleeves from what's the guy from poland um what's his name uh the toper dude yeah 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 i forget what his brand name is i i i like so i commissioned that guy i commissioned him back when he had first started making sleeves um so they're pretty cheap first of all um and you could like i pretty much gave him measurements i was like okay like i needed um i i need basically the perimeter to be this much um like, length width and then the height is more like kind of like relatively like as long as it fits and it closes with the magnetic clasp it's like good enough so i did that Back in the day, I, I did it for like a bunch of boards, so I have like a bunch of sleeves that fit like different sizes, like from from full size all the way down to like 60. I like, I like back then I commissioned like, like seven or eight sleeves like that, I think. And then, so I have a bunch of those, um, and for, with a lot of my boards. Mech fashion, yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the man. Um, so, so yeah, I have a bunch of those sleeves, and then, and then after that I actually decided to buy a bunch of like TX cases and stuff, so. I ended up having like a lot of boards on TX bags and whatnot. Although it's kind of nice that keywords nowadays ship in hard carrying cases. Like actually, I think that's like probably one of the nicest changes that have been, like has happened in current keyboard kits for sale is that you get a carrying bag for it. Um, it was such a pain to get them before because you had to import them. Um, whether it was from China or from Korea, like TX bags from Korea, super expensive, um, because it's volumetric weight too. Um, like, you know, it, it would still be like what, 25 per bag, but then like you 
pile on shipping and shipping would be like 60 70 dollars easily um for a handful of them and so it, it sucked um so back in the day i did order a bunch of bags like that i like entered the like the teha types back too like like i got like two of them there and then like the mercy bags whenever they popped up later that kind of stuff but then now it's like everything ships in, in those like keyboard bags which is pretty nice um but yeah like everything has keyboard bags now so it's so convenient um i i really i'm super glad that's been like a more recent change that has happened i think like including stabs or like other like small little accessories i don't mind too much whether it's there or not because sometimes like i just want to use my cherry clip-ins or whatever um so i don't mind too much of like oh having a screwdriver in the case or having like a stabs and whatever um but or like a keycap puller that kind of stuff but but the carrying case is like definitely like super important i think all right so um so let's get started so today's build is going to be this um new board from well actually technically i guess it's um it's a board that's about to run through uh, Click Clack IO, I believe, like um, Mech Merlin, Alex Otos, and I think Frank the Tank, who is in the Click Clack IO server as well, they did some content on it. Um, it's this G Square Studio um, Vintage 60S. So it's this gigantic board over here. They have a website too. I haven't checked the website. It's like right here, G2 Square basically squ.com um uh, but i believe they do like these vintage inspired boards but more so kind of like with a very 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 modern twist i think um and so this one is kind of interesting it's called vintage 60s but it's really more like a 65 to 75 percent layout so it's not really a 60 so it kind of reminds me of people naming the percent uh the the percent canoe like it said like percent 60 in the back of the weight um, but it was actually a 65%. Kind of, kind of funny, but maybe lost in translation. I don't know. Um, anyway, so it comes in this like gigantic box, um, just like hard box with obviously some foam that has here. I, we have a polycarb plate. It looks like I also have an FR4 plate, so I actually don't know what plate I'm going to use. Um, and um, it also comes with the foam pieces as well, like you know, P foam, plate foam, and case foam, which is the usual trio of foam. Actually, I guess it only comes with P foam and um, plate foam. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, okay. So we got, yeah, we got foam here. That we can use. Um, then we have our plates here. Whoa! Oh my God! This is like another one of those like super skeleton plates. Um. Uh, oh wow. Okay. Um. Kind of scared I'm gonna break it, but it has those like per row cuts and per column cuts. This is crazy, man. I have to use the foam for this, I think. Um. Otherwise, it's just gonna like disintegrate as I type. Um, anyway, that's a polycarb plate. <laughs> this is intense, dude. Like, this is, this is crazy. This goes hard. Um, uh, anyway, it basically is a 75% layout, as you can see. This is a compressed 75% layout, too. The, the type that does not have a blocker. So we have the 75%, compressed 75% layout here. Um, I believe the mounting system of this is kind of like a mix between using these like foam, um, like these foam little, um, kind of grommets sort of, but, um, and then, and then screws. So it's like, it's kind of like burger mount actually. It's like isolated top rather. Um, and then there's the FR4 plate, which is actually a, a decent bit stiffer than the polycarp. The polycarp one really, like they come up, really comes apart here at the, rows but this one is a little better um definitely a lot sturdier than the polycart one so we'll see which one we decide to use i don't mind um so let's keep going here we have of course our pcb yeah so it's called a 60s but it's actually a 75 
Uh, <laughs> that part is interesting too. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It may be something lost in translation, but I IDK, right? Um, so there's that. Um, so what's kind of neat about this board is that it has a buzzer as well as a solenoid. I don't know if it works as it's programmed for today. Uh, and obviously you can turn it off too, I th think. Yeah, anyway, so it has a solenoid and a buzzer. Like it says solenoid and then buzzer over here. You can have a switch that you can just toggle. And then um, obviously has like JST outs for all of the all of those um but yeah this has per key cuts too it's very intense um layout wise it's looking like 6.25u with fixed ANSI oh it has step caps off at least that's that's okay um and it looks like it has a 1u bottom row on the on the right side which is kind of like that uh I guess old school 75% layout where like all the keys on the right side are like 1U. Um, is this really old school? I don't know. I think a lot of like the OEM stuff, a lot of the pre-built stuff has the the 1U alt control FN over here. Um, see it a lot in the pre-built stuff. Um, but yeah, it's like that kind of layout. Um, but it's like compressed 75. So, and everything else is like ANSI. Whose geriatric fingers are these cuts meant for? I have no idea. All right, nice. Um, so here we have the board. Uh, it looks like we have all our little grommets or little foam pieces and the screws here for the mounting. And then looks like we got a, an anodized red color here. This is kind of actually kind of hard to take off. Uh, let me do it this way. Okay, there we go. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, I'll just go ahead and open it up. Kind of cyberboard vibes, yeah, like very strong cyberboard vibes, right? Um, Definitely has like that same same like side profile the the cyberboard. I think the cyberboard is a lot more pronounced though. It's it's actually much wider on the cyberboard. So this one's a little bit less so, but yeah, definitely still has that gigantic um, case look. Um, looks like we have some decorations with polished brass. Um. Oh, we do have some case foam here, which is actually pre-adhered. That's fine. Um, and in on the interior here, we have our solenoid over here. And then there's a buzzer over there, I think, with a little uh, piezoelectric speaker, I think. Um, wow. <laughs> uh, we have a laser engraving here, designed by G-Square Studio. Vintage 60s version. I have no idea too. I guess. Um, <laughs> this 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 engraving reminds me of like the stuff that I see with like like drug cartels and their like like T-shirts and hats and stuff on their like polos or like I don't know. It's just kind of. Motorcycles, yeah, like that Harley Davidson kind of vibe too. Yeah, I don't know. Um, pretty, pretty interesting take uh, to decide to do an engraving in this style. I don't know why, just kind of random. So I, I do think like some of the design choices here like kind of feel a little disjoint in the sense that I'm not sure why, but it's cool. It's, it's unique, I would say. Um, but the rest is a pretty solid case. Um, Sinulu <laughs> cartel keyboard of choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a pretty flush USB-C port over here. No recess. Um, uh, no recess, a little bit unfortunate in the sense that you do see the cable stick out a little bit more. Um, I mean like the port, right? It has some little outlets here, maybe for the sound. Um, actually, it's kind of on both sides. Little outlets. Um, don't know if it does much really. Um, and then, and then yeah, so I guess 
Hmm. I should open it up. I think I should just open it up. So, so we can test everything out too. Um, so let's get my screwdriver here. Sound of anarchy? Solenoid equals vintage. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I guess so. Alright, so yeah, let's just get the case opened up here. Um, looks like it just uses some standard M2.5 screws here. By the way, is mech fashion no longer operating? Huh, maybe they have been inactive as of late. I know that in the, during the pandemic, they were still active a bit, but don't recall the last time they were actually. Wait, am I? Oh, I see, okay, there we go. Okay, these are a little bit tangled up, so I'm just gonna un disentangle them here. Okay, there we go. There comes off the top piece. Wow, this is a massive top piece, as you can see. Top piece is like this, covers the whole frame, has a little vintage 60 edge badge on the back. Um, the solenoid is actually pre-attached over here. Obviously it sounds like very hollow like that, but I guess once everything is in, it's not so much like that. Um, and then there's our daughter board here. It's not the universal type. Um, and yeah, basically it's like top mount. I see the screw holes here for the plate. So it's gonna be like top mount. Um, okay, so leave that on the side. And then down here looks like we have the controller for the solenoid, which I assume is this one. And for the buzzer, which is this one. So this is the buzzer. Should be just like a piezoelectric or something like that. Um, cool. And then the rest is just pre-attached foam. But the case is pretty straightforward. It, it just is, uh, it's a flat piece, um, relatively. Price, good question. Um, let me check, actually. Uh, I did link the ClickLack.io website, but let me see if the Geek Hack thread also has the price. Do, 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 do. Um, looks like the standard edition starts at 385. Special edition, 425 estimated. Um, and then they're gonna do a full copper edition. Okay, 1.8K, huh? Oh man, that's crazy. And then they have some bespoke panel set. Hmm, interesting, I don't know what that means. What's this bespoke panel? Oh, okay, interesting. So here's the bespoke panel. Um, I put it in the chat. Um, it's, it's like some engraved panels for the, for the accents. Uh, I mean, actually for the sides and stuff. Oh, very, very interesting. Um, very out there. Uh, here's a geek hack thread if you need it. But yeah, it starts at 385 or so and then uh, and above. And this will run through click like IO. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on the side for a second. Grab my PCV, just make sure that everything's working. I uh, don't really need the solenoid right now, I just need the USB. It should just work on its own without the rest. I'll be surprised if it doesn't. So today we're going to be using these new switches from JWK and Vertex. Um, Vertex, the same makers as the Angle, the Arc. Um, they basically just did a, you know, collab um, with JWK, JWK. Uh, and they're running these switches called V1 switches. 
Okay, simple. Um, they're linears, nylon, top and bottom, palm stem, 15, mil 15 millimeter spring, which is like the medium size, I think, for TX. 62 gram bottom out. I believe these are... Um, I believe these are standard, um, standard length for the bottom out. Ooh, very nice color. They look, they're just black housings with purple stems. Nice and a, a very peri colored stem. Very, very cute color actually. I actually really like this, the color at least. Like, you know, simple but nice colorway. Um, and yeah, this is these are JWIC made, like JWK made. These are standard bottom out indeed. These are four millimeter travel, and they do appear to be factory looped pretty well. Actually, they, they do appear to be factory looped pretty well. Um, I don't hear spring ping or crunch. And they do feel quite smooth. Yeah, there is some spray lube. It's pretty light, but it's still there. Like, you can kind of see it in the reflection there. Uh, wait, that was hard to see. There. There. A little bit on the front. And then on both sides. And a little bit on the back, too. But, uh, it looks good. I mean... Pre-loop seems fine with me if it isn't, like if I don't have to open them up again. So we're gonna use them stock because that's the idea. Here is to use them stock. So we'll try these out. These are the V1 switches. All right, so do that. Um, let's try to test our PCB here. Nacho Libre, hello, how's it going? Um, is there a big difference between the OG F1 and the 722? Uh, design differences, yeah. Uh, the 722 has this like bar on the back. Let's see, vintage. Okay, cool. I got the JSON file here. Let me put it on the screen. Oh. Huh. Not popping up, huh? Should try that again. Ah, uh, there it is. Okay. Um, which keys are the quietest and slimiest? Huh? I have no idea. All right. So let's just check our. Oh, interesting. Why the the layout options? Um. Okay. Uh, honestly, this layout is just fine. Nothing special. Um, we'll just test it out. Yeah, it's mostly external case differences. Um, but I would say because the mounting system is pretty much the same, blue crayon, I would assume they don't feel that far different. Um, I recall for a fact that, I mean, I have an F1. I did build a 722. I didn't compare the two side by side, but from what I recall, the um, F1722 did feel pretty similar to the uh, um, to the to the original one. So yeah, because they use the same mounting system, where it's basically like you cut O-rings and you fit them into um, you know you fit them into the into the grooves in the case. And then you go ahead and um, uh, 
And then you go ahead and like close the case, right? Yeah, like the mounting system is the same. So I would assume it it's going to feel pretty similar. All right, so I think layout wise, like, I mean, sorry, not layout wise. My, I mean, PCB wise here, everything's gonna work fine. Um, just gotta double check that it has all the diodes and stuff, but I don't think there's really much to test here. Yeah, it doesn't look like I have missing diodes, so I'll just go ahead and build. All right, so this PCB is a standard, um, it's a standard uh, 1.6 millimeter PCB. So, just another thing to note. Okay, so let's see. Let's go zero like that. Do you think there are better alternatives to broken in MX Blacks? Um, it's a preference based thing. If you like MX Blacks, I personally don't think there is a switch that sounds like MX Blacks. Um, there are a lot of smooth switches though. Like, like you know, like JWK or otherwise, or Gadron and whatnot. But I don't think there are switches that sound like MX Blacks. Not many, if at all. <clears throat> I don't know about you guys, but I, that's how I feel about it. Right, I think I think I think Cherry MX just has a very characteristic sound, perhaps due to their specific like plastic that they use for their housings and stuff. Like it's just the way they make their switches; it just sounds very particular. Um, and so I don't really think there is anything that's going to sound like MX Blacks. All right, so we also have these stabs from G Square Studio. That has basically all the like you know all four plus spacebar, and um, comes with these little stickers if you need them. Not gonna use them. Basically, it's band aid mod, but um, they kind of look like Durock stabs here. Yep, they look like Durock stabs basically. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use those. All right, so six two five. Step Chris, thanks for the Prime Gaming sub. Appreciate it. And then let's do enter backspace and left shift. And then I guess I'll just uh, two easers here. These housings out. Let's get enough for everything. Spend the side for now. Unloop two million ultra glides are OP. Two million meaning two million actuations. That's quite a lot, huh? Quite a quite a few actuations. Have you seen the weird Wu Choi stats with the sleeves on the ends? Oh, I think I have. Yeah. Um, personally, not a huge fan of modifications at the end of the wires just because um there i feel like there's room for error there but that said if it works stock that would be a good improvement i mean if it's consistent and it works stock that that would be kind of nice i haven't tried them i think or did i try which stops for once or uh, for the zoom i think i did for the zoom actually for the zoom 75 that was fine they worked okay But I'm, I'm kind of used to like just standard stabs like Cherry, ETX, Duroc, you name it. All right, let's go ahead and loop these stabs first. Just gonna use standard 205 as, as my usual.
But yeah, um... I personally feel like most dabs are tunable just fine. As long as you have some experience with it, like, you know, just trial and error. My rule of thumb is, you know, just loop, loop surfaces that make contact um, if it bothers you. And then uh, I think for ticking, just mainly focusing on the ends of the wires is, a, is probably what you want to do. But yeah. The picture from the frame in the back is tilted and the spacing is off. I can't stop looking at it. <laughs> Those, those on the back there? Yeah, I probably got tilted a little bit because I've been like moving and packing and stuff. So it is. It's too bad. You'll have to, you'll have to, you'll have to withstand it. Yeah, just moving and packing and stuff. So just been busy moving around the room. <laughs> But I feel like, yeah, stuff on the wall is probably gonna go down later. Um, and then, like, keyword stuff, I'm, like, slowly organizing separately. So. Do you just move in or planning on moving out? I'm moving out soon. So I'm just moving apartments. Um, I'm actually, like, largely, I'm going to be storing most of my stuff. And then just taking, like, essential clothes and some other stuff for, for keywords and whatnot. Um with me and then um temporarily going to be at a different place and then and then i'm moving like actually i'm moving again um late in the summer so it's gonna suck the fact that i have to move twice you know but um it's actually the packing and that stuff hasn't been that bad actually so uh, i think fortunately i think i felt okay about it thus far it's a bit of a pain in the ass physical labor wise but that's about it Why are you moving so much? Uh, basically, I am moving in with my partner, and so um, I am basically just moving in temporarily between now and whenever my partner's lease is up. Uh, so we have to wait until the lease is up, and then and then we're gonna be looking. So uh, I mean, well, we're gonna be looking before the lease is up, of course, but but we're gonna be looking and moving into a new place. Um, after that so but uh, I didn't want to like I couldn't extend here for like a few months for example because I live with roommates and they're all leaving too um so so yeah for now I have to like store some stuff move temporarily with like a small amount of things and then move again yeah bit of a more convoluted process but I mean just just the way it goes right when it comes to that How often have you been wire balancing for recent stabs? I haven't wire balanced ever. <laughs> um, I, if a wire is bad, I just toss it out and get a new stab. That's as simple as it gets for me. If a wire is obviously bad, like if I try hard to, to get this right and the stab just won't work and it's obvious that the wire is bent, just throw it out. Throw it out, get a new stab. It's like two bucks, three bucks, something like that, right? Like per stab. Like assuming you have like more than one set of stabs. Uh, I don't wire balance. It's a, it feels like such a, it feels like such a waste of time. Um, to like fine tune and tweak where I think nowadays there's like tools to make it easier, right? Like there, there are like there's like those like wire balancing tool kits or whatever, like the Geon one and some other ones I've seen. I think, and that's cool and all, but and even if there weren't before or like there's like those jewelers tools and stuff, it it just it's just tedious. Yeah, it's just tedious, and I, I found it, I found it like a waste of time, and so I never did it. I got too lazy, never did it. 
Same with when the Holy Mod and that kind of stuff was popular. I was like, I mean, if it works for y'all, that's awesome, guys. But I, I loot my stabs and they're fine. So um, I don't want to spend another extra 30 minutes doing stabs if I can afford not to. You know? Yeah. Just get TX and you good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even even TX can be bad. You know, like I've had I've had TX wires that aren't good. You know, like I've had TX wires that I had to be like, oh, I think there's something about this wire that's maybe short, or it's like rubbing. You know, it's like just slightly faulty because maybe the tolerances just didn't pan out. And I replaced the wire and it worked fine. Like you know, after replacing the wire, it was all good. Um, so yeah, I mean, it happens for any stab. Like tolerances are a thing in manufacturing, and so. You just have to be watchful, uh, mindful that this can happen anytime. And so what I do is, if if something is bad like that, I just I just replace it. It's it's easier. I'm in love with key with my keyword. I don't know what to build next. What am I typing on? Oh oh, I think I think was asking you here. I think ODM knows what I'm typing on. Tofu 62.0. Oh, nice. I had. I don't think I've seen the 2.0s in person, but I mean, I've heard that the improvements are great on the new QD fan stuff. So it's good. If people are happy with it, it's good. I mean, QD fans has been around for a while now that I think about it. They started around the same time I was entering the hobby, like 2017 ish. It's amazing. Good. Good, for, good bang for the buck, I imagine. If you hear a lot of noise and stuff in the background, it's probably. Uh, Roommates cleaning, packing, all sorts of stuff like that. So you're just gonna hear some noise in the background, and I'm not using a filter, so you'll just hear it. <laughs> just FYI, I hear it. Yeah, yeah. What are they doing? Brushing something? Cleaning? I think they're just cleaning. Sounds like scrubbing. Some intense sanding or scrubbing, brushing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sounds like a brush or a broom. Probably cleaning. Probably cleaning. Are they above you? No, same level. Same level. Like. But but they're very close by. They're like next next to me pretty much. Like next door. What kind of keyboards do they have? Oh, I, they don't they don't do mechanical keyboards. So they just have their laptops, uh, maybe like a membrane board or something like that. Yeah, they don't really care too much about mechanical keyboards. They know about it. I mean, obviously, because uh, you know, I I live with my roommates, but they don't really care much about what what to use. So, I think they just use like their laptop keywords and stuff, because they normally just do work on their laptops. I think they mostly all work also in an like not at home. They like they don't do much work at home, so I don't think they really mind for having a a computer setup at home. Are they into it? No. No, they're not. I have friends who are into it, but not my roommates. My roommates are not. What about my girlfriend? Yeah, she's into it. Uh, she has a few boards. She actually uses ortho. Has a plonk. Um, which I can't use. I can't do ortho. Um, 
She also has like a bear 65. I think also has like a 65% somewhere, 60% somewhere. And then I think, yeah, I think that's the main stuff. I think that right now she's just been using the thing 60, uh, I mean, no, the bear 65 for the most part. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously, like, I mean, she can borrow my boards if she wants to, so yeah, it's it's whatever. So no need to buy more boards, I guess. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. So funnily enough, uh, they've been around. They knew about the hobby since around the same time I did. So like six years now. Except we didn't know each other for until like more recently. I just got into it. Oh, cool. All right. Stabs are done. Well, we need to test them out and see how they are. But preliminarily done. I need to get some artisans. Artisans are expensive. Don't get into artisans if it's if it's too much. I I advise people to not get into artisans unless they really like it. You just have to like it. I mean, it's a perspective thing, perhaps. You some people treat it as art. Some people treat it as I don't know something to collect, something to flare, something to add flair to their keyboard. You know. Uh, everyone has their perspective on it, but, um, yeah, my advice is don't get into it if you don't think it's, like, a good way to spend your money. It, it is a lot of money and time and money. Mostly money. Too late? Yeah, I know, I know. Too late for as many of y'all, I know. <laughs> All right, um, what are you guys leaning towards? Also, oh, I forgot about the P foam and the plate foam, but should we use it? So I guess let's let's go in order of things. First of all, should we use P foam and plate foam, or only one of the two? And then second is which plate should I use today? Hmm? Are we thawking it up? I'm gonna duck jet fire and have had a hard time getting the space bar to sound good. Do you like the one you built? Uh, I th do think a lot of duck bars generally don't sound great with the space bar. Maybe it's because of the mounting positions. They sound okay, but it's like average. Both? Alright, let's do it. Cool. Might as well. I do think we kind of have to, just in the sense that... Um, just in the sense that um, there is a lot of flex cuts and stuff, and I don't think it's conducive to good sound if we don't use it. Which is kind of, kind of unfortunate. I do like keyboards that just kind of sound nicely without um, having to use the phone, but that is mostly a personal preference. Alright, FR4. Polycarb, FR4. I think FR4. I'm gonna go with FR4 today. I'm kind of feeling like FR4. Oh, wait. Uh, play foam. Play foam.
Type B this week? Yes, Type B this week indeed. Um, it, I, th I think it's going to be on Wednesday evening, around the same time as today's stream. Um, so yeah, should be then. Alright, so first of all, let's put the screws for the stabs on. And then, next we should test our stabs. PC? Oh, you guys want PC? Oh, up to you. I, I don't mind either way. Just let me know before I um, put everything on. I mean, put all the um, switches on rather. Maybe you can do a quick poll, I don't mind. ODM, do you mind just hitting a poll with a plate? Sir, thank you. Much appreciated. That's odd. PC is winning somehow. I guess there's just more people who want PC today. That's all. That said, it's only been four, five votes or so. So it's mostly uh, small sample size. Yeah, it's just a small. It's just a small sample size here. Yeah, come back. Nice. Cool. Well, I don't mind whichever way it goes. <sighs> Does it matter when the solenoid is on? Hmm. Probably not as much. Probably the solenoid is way louder. Than everything else, so probably not. Looks like PC is gonna win today, huh? Alright, PC it is then. Alright. And let's uh, put a few switches here. Can you add a solenoid to an existing board? Uh, you can, yeah, but you need to. You need a driver. You need a solenoid driver for it. I mean, it's uh, electri like electrically speaking, it's not complicated to to have a solenoid driver, but you still do have to have one. You know, like. Cause you have to have a way to turn it on, turn it off control perhaps like how like the delay between like because it has to like identify that you're putting in a keystroke and then that it's supposed to um, that it's supposed to work right so you can it is possible though and the space of course yes yes of course the space is a consideration but yes it is possible I definitely I have known of people who have. I think AIO three. I mean, well, I guess for what? Which board was it that he uh, had the solenoid option? Was it the lunar? 
think it was a lunar too. I can't use a plate fork for this, but these uh, flex cuts are kind of. Uh, have you seen the Chord Machine AKT01 by Akuto Studio? I have not, Sewer. Um, I would have to look. You got a link? Check it out if you have a link. If not, I'll just Google it in a bit. In just a minute. It's on Kickstarter. Oh, okay. No wonder I didn't see it. I don't follow Kickstarter stuff, so... Um... Probably why I didn't see it. Reminiscent what Teenage Engineering's OP1. Oh, okay. Burger and McDonald's? Um, hmm. I don't know, probably just like a, like a quarter pounder or something like that with cheese. Or like, I guess I don't mind a McChicken occasionally. I, I don't eat burgers at McDonald's though. I like their fries and I like McFlurries and the cones and I like their hash browns and some other breakfast stuff, but I don't often get burgers at McAdee's. Not gonna lie. Not as appetizing when I can get something else elsewhere. McDouble or Big Mac? Yeah, classics are good. The classics are good. Like, can't go wrong with it, you know? Vintage 60 looks great. Always excited to see new boards that come out. Yeah, for sure. I agree. I do I do like to see more just just different stuff. It doesn't always have to be the same old, same old. But I mean same thing, same thing for me. Like, you know, I have different preferences. From what people wanna buy. Or like what the new stuff is like. Sometimes a cheeseburger just hits right. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, that sounds nice. Real question, what's my Shan famous foods order? Oh man, I need to look at the menu for a sec though. Um, I know what I would order though, pretty sure. Um, I personally like their spicy cumin lamb. Um, I think it was their hand rib noodles. It's really good. Um, I think that's usually what I would get. Uh, but I also don't mind the, um, which one is it? Where is it? Was, was there, was there like an oxtail one? I mean, obviously there's like the, the pork one. I think it was like the Mount Chi pork. That one's pretty good too. 
But I think spicy cumin lamb is probably my go-to. Oh yeah, wait, I haven't tested all the stops yet. Okay, I think this staff's found fine. If they need a little adjusting, it's fine. I can do it later. All right, we can just go ahead and put all the rest of the switches here. These switches do look pretty though. I actually like the the black housing with the purple stems. I kind of want to use these somewhere else too. And they feel pretty good stock. These uh, V1 switches. So I think even if you use these stock, they're probably fine. If you're a little picky though, you know, maybe you can consider opening them up. Uh, I believe you can also purchase them um, unlubed. So so they can, you know, you can basically just like lube them yourself. That is an option too, I think. So yeah, but I will send the, the pre-lube ones today. For today's build rather. Properly to this, I mean the clip, uh, the switch clip um, clips properly to the plate. pit so far I think First time I built, always managed to get a few bent pins. Yeah. For hot swab, it happens all the time. Sometimes it just doesn't feel like it bent. Because, you know, like there's a bit of resistance when you do push against the, against the pin. But, yeah, no, sometimes it just, it just bends anyway. That looks good so far, though, I think. Yo, besides GMK, what other keycap brands do you like? Um, I like um, Q 
Kiko Boy is pretty good. It's a new ABS double shot manufacturer. Um, has pretty competitive pricing now. Um, and pretty comparable quality to GMK. Um, I would say I like CRP for PVT, Cherry Profile Keycaps. Um, I like Enjoy PVT uh, for PVT dice up stuff as well. Um, I mean, if you like signature plastics, they also do like DCS profile or SA profile, DSA profile, etc. Like not Cherry Profile. But if you're looking for Cherry only, then it's gonna be. I think those are good options, like solid options. New JTK is pretty good. Yeah, it's alright. I, I do still think they have some issues with, uh, with Legends. But it's not bad. Ad rolled mid answer. Oh, my bad. Uh, so I said Kikobo, enjoy PVT, Hammerworks, CRP. If you enjoy signature plastics, they also do SA and DSA and DCS profile. Topri OEM? Oh, yes. I, I wish there were more options for Topri OEM. Oh, God. I, I really wish there were blank key set options for Topri OEM. I don't like using MX sliders for Topri. But I mean, I know that it is an option, but it just doesn't feel and sound the same, I feel. Speaking of DCS, you should do cherry rep on this? Hmm. No, don't feel don't feel too strongly about it, considering the red and the orange. We need more Topri artisans? Well, yeah. I mean, we need more active Topri artisans. That's for sure. More active Topri artisans. Definitely not many active makers who make them still. So, that part is kind of a bummer, yeah. I mean, there's what? Dread keys, alpha keycaps. Brocaps, um, who else makes Topre right now? Tokipi, yeah, well, the Tokipi pretty sporadic nowadays, I would say. Um, and yeah, mostly they're like blanks, right, too. Like, before, there used to be also like what MF caps, Key Collective, KWK, yeah, KWK. Um, but imagine winning KWK, couldn't be me. Um,. Arrow caps, yeah, yeah, they have some modif uh, some modifiers out there. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, what's what's his name? Backwards caps, like uh, Jacob's Mirror. He also did some Topper mods early on, like these 1.5 U keys and stuff. Um, I mean, obviously, there's like some older makers, like I think Nub also made some like Topre. Binge made some Topre. Um, Zorb made some Topre. But yeah, it's hard to find those too. They're kind of rare. Crap. I don't remember if Crap did toe break, Tritone. He did focus a lot more on MX than he did on toe break, though. Oh, yes. I mean, if you do have some. Oh, no, no. You're right. You're right. There are some. There's like. There's some keys uh, from Crap that are toe break. Yeah, he did like some FNs and stuff. Suited up also did some toe break in TMX. Uh, for artisans, suited up keycaps. Um, Keyforge early work had some Topre. I think the Saber V1 has Topre. But that's it. Like the Shishis and the Orochis and all that never made it to Topre. But yeah, I would say that uh, Topre making in general is pretty... It's pretty rare, comparatively. That play looks like a pain to put switches in. Uh, it's mostly because I'm trying to make sure that they clip in properly, so yeah. I think it's mostly my being meticulous about it. Oh, hi Kim. How, how's it going? How are you? Playing a lot of Honkai?
I have been playing a lot of Honkai, nice. Me well, not no, I'm not too far. I'm like level like I'm like I'm like just like 20 something, so not that far. Um I kinda just started, so a little slow. Also, I don't have that much time, so I haven't been playing too much. But I've been enjoying it, it's pretty fun. Been pretty much F2P, which is great. Well, that board has a lot of JSTs. Yeah, it does. Um, there is one for a solenoid, one for a buzzer, one for the USB, and uh, one for, I think it's a controller. Uh, like, uh, like, so like some of the circuitry. Yeah, but yeah, it does have quite a few though. Shonis, hello, how's it going? Alright. You can already hear that characteristic foam sound. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna test the PCB first. Before I just go ahead and uh, do the rest. AJ Tamisan, hello, how's it going? How are you? Wow, this board has more JST cables than I have siblings. Same. load load open that file all right cool should have shown up all right nice just uh, ISO stuff that's not relevant here. That's good. All right, I think everything's working. It's the Hydro keyboard. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. It's called Vintage 60S, but it's not 60. It's actually a 75%. <laughs> a compressed 75%. Uh, interesting, isn't it? All right, so let me see here. Weird, yeah. Maybe something lost in translation there, you know? To be honest, names are a social construct. <laughs> All right, so the way I think it works is you put these little round grommets and then you put the screws for the mounting. There's a lot of these guys. All 
That's confusion? Yeah. Is it top mount? Yeah, it's like basically like isolated top mount or like burger mount sort of, you know, where you just put this little piece of foam um, and you put the screw in through it. So it basically gets compressed on the little piece of foam. Um, and then, um, is it foam? Is this? No, uh, more like silicone actually. It's more like silicone. Um, so it's like kind of like isolated top mount, I guess. Hello, is it stocky? It's not Topre. So you have your answer. Okay, so I think it goes in like that. And then, are these screws all the same? Yeah, okay. Slightly longer than the others, I think. All right. Is that a dolphin? Yes, that it is indeed a dolphin, yeah. This is uh, quite a lot of screws. <laughs> Yeah, it's like the isolated top mount from the Sonnet or Mode 65 as well, yeah. It's very similar to that. Very, very similar to that. that all right so let's see JST for USB and then this is for that solenoid so let's see wow right to actually getting used yeah of course <laughs> why would I not use it am I mean, actually just collects dust oh that's too bad I like the tray the tray is pretty convenient Okay, so I believe this goes here. Oh, I just need to make sure the orientation of this is correct. Let me just double check what they told me about the orientation of the um this thing here. Hmm. Okay, so which side goes where for the solenoid? Oh, wait, no, that's not it. Um, nope.
Okay, alright, so that part goes in facing that direction. So this way. Okay. And then this is the solenoid controller. JST. There we go. This is the buzzer. There we go. Okay. I ate my Raita. This is such a wacky design. <laughs> it's interesting, right? It's a bit different, that's for sure. All right, let's just make sure none of the cables get caught in the thing. And just close it down. Dang, is that a late 90s gangster font? Yeah! Yeah, it's like the like motorcycle gang <laughs> engraving. <laughs> I was saying, it's like, it reminds me of like cartels merch. <laughs> like gang merch. Let me show you up close. Not gonna lie, I kinda dig it. It's I think it's funny. I find it pretty fun. Yeah, I think it's just really hilarious. <laughs> Man. It's pretty funny. <laughs> the muskets too? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Alright, there it is. Um, let me see what the, um, what the, what the function keys, uh, were for. Pretty sure there's a way to turn on, okay, turn on solenoid, turn off solenoid, and then the switch here for switching the two. Okay, cool. The bottom row is nasty. <laughs> it's that six two five, and one U bottom row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that uh that OEM style kind of bottom row, you know. All right, so let's go ahead and let's organize some of this stuff here. What keys are we gonna use today, huh? What keys are we using today? For this bad boy. Something dark? Hmm. Something dark. Burgundy? I do have Jim get Burgundy. That could work. Dolch? We did Dolch last time too, I think, for the. for a great Kaze. But Dolch works for with red, yeah. Wob? Yeah, I can always do Wob. Oh, I have Wob Red Cyrillic. I mean, no, not red. Just Wob Cyrillic, the, the Kanakis one. The Tom one. I have that one too, Wob Cyrillic. I don't think... Did I try that once? I think I did. I might have. And then um, I also have... Let me check my key sets here. Uh... Mm -mm -mm. DCS Rebel, yeah, I do have Hamon. I do have DCS Rebel, yeah. Um, let's see something with red, right? Uh, 
Yeah, whichever works. I also have GMK Deep Well, which could work. Um, Yuru. You want? You guys want to throw it on a boat? <laughs> or not include some gangs for G dice ups? <laughs> Dude, that would that would have been epic. That would have been great, man. That would have been rad for sure. Um, that that'll be fun. <laughs> All right, let's throw it up on a pole. Um, I'll I'll put some options here. Let's see, key set, key set. So I have GMK Burgundy. I have DCS Rebel Red Alert. Um, I have I think someone suggested GMK Hamon. Um, I guess Wob. Any Wob. Um, and then, uh, let's see, I don't have Evil Dolch, uh, and then I guess Honeywell or Deepwell. Well, let's say, let's say Deepwell this time, I think the Darker Red might work pretty well. GMK Deepwell. Uh, alright, I'll let you guys vote. Um, I'll be right back. Just gonna go like wash my hands and stuff and organize all this stuff here. So I'll be RB. Y'all uh vote and I'll be back shortly.
Okay, I am back. All right, so I got DCS Rebel right here. So I think that's what was asked for. So let's try it out. When was this run again? Um, like 2000 and I actually don't know. DCS Rebel. This was back in, let's see, where's the authority? Where's the authority link, huh? Can't, can't find it. It was like in like 2010. 2011, 2011, yeah. Wow, I was still in college? Yeah, me too, actually. <laughs> me too. <laughs> all right, let's try this out. Um, all right, Afro. Do you know if anybody who has been in the hobby since then, or even since 2006? Um, yeah, yeah, I do know a few people who have been around since like 2012 or so. 2011, 2012, yeah. Like, I think Pudsy technically started like a long time ago. Sifo, JQ, um, Binge. Um, uh, right in the bay, uh, so Zach from Key Cult. Um, who else? Who else? Um, yeah, there's been a there's a few other people, I think, right? Just don't remember who else. Um, oh, we can do this OTD legend, kind of cool. Let's do the black one. I heard a few DK savers made to America. Uh, there should be more now, I think. I mean, people imported them probably. Oh, are we gonna use the red row or nah? Oh, I mean back then, the original run? Oh, I see. Um, I don't know. Yeah, there's probably a good number of them now. Red row? Okay, cool. So red row. Do you know that the <laughs> the enter key I have here is icon plus text, but the modifiers here aren't? It's a funny little thing. So I don't think the red matches perfectly either. Actually, let's just do red row without red enter. I think that probably might look a little better. This didn't have red backspace, huh? No, it was supposed to be just for the num row. So it was only up to this, yeah.
Oh, I see. Okay, for modifiers here, it's gonna be a little bit weird just because I don't have like matching rows. So I'm just gonna have to just, you know, cope here. So maybe, or I mean, I guess I could use, I guess I could use numro keys, TBH, but it doesn't really matter, I guess. And then for bottom row, let's see. All artisans? I could do that too. Yeah, that's doable too. Let's see, six to five. Uses three one use, so let's do a win key. I think let's do a no TD left hand, and then what's this? Um, and then we can do an FN key. Actually, I don't know which one's which, but it doesn't matter, I guess. Hello, Quapa, how's it going? More artisan, more better. <laughs> I guess we can do that. Let's see. Red, red stuff. Starting for AP World. Oh, AP World History. Oh, cool. Been a while since I've heard about any AP tests. <laughs> Maybe we can do that. Some some artisanal keycaps on this side. I look. It's a lot of artisans. <laughs> I know they think about it. Let's see. Red, red, red. I think I might have some more. Pilot, <laughs> kind of fun. And then have this Cosmo. Have this TRMK pair over here. I think they can go at the bottom. And I think I can use this art key here. Actually, let me switch the art key and the Cosmo. I think, I think that works. <clears throat> I do not miss AP classes either. I do not miss AP either. All right, let's give it a shot. Here we okay. What is AP for US non Yangs? Um, it's kind of like, I mean, it's it's called advanced placement. You basically get a uh, university credit for it. But I guess nowadays I don't think you actually place advanced, like do advanced placement. <laughs> but some some schools do still provide credit for it. Yeah, not a, not all schools do though. I think, I think that's kind of changed a little bit. All right, so let me see what's this Alt F N Control. Okay. Let's see, so turn on the typing testing. All right. OK. 
Okay. All right. Also, it's good to take AP class if you don't want to have asshat class clowns. Also true, yeah. <laughs> also true. All right. So here we have our vintage 60S keyboard. Um, with a bunch of artisans and some, yes, this does have plate foam, PE foam. It does have some case foam. It was already attached in the case, but it was like very thin. Uh, it's a 1.6 millimeter PCB polycarbonate plate with flex cuts. PCB has some flex cuts too, I think. Um, and this is DCS Rebel um, for the key set, for the key cap set. So DCS key caps. And these are V1 switches from Vertex and JWK. Uh, these are factory lubed. Um, so I, I didn't modify them at all. 62 gram bottom out, if I recall. And yep. All right. Let's give it a try without any solenoid, whatever buzzer. I don't, I don't know if it works, but we'll test it in just a sec. So we'll give it a shot without, and then we'll give it a shot with. All right, here we go. It does sound like a keyboard with foam, yes. It is pretty pretty much exactly what a lot of boards with foam sound like, um, as expected. Um, but hey. Alright, let's try the... Um, let me just go through the mods really quick. Alright, and let's see if the solenoid works. I think it's... FN, let's try this. Oh, fuck, it works. Excuse me, do you have a second to hear about the good word of electric capacitor from the Church of Rubber Cup? Thog. Hey, Sipula, hello, Sip, how's it going? Um, Thanks for the raid. What are you up to today? All right, so we do have a solenoid that works. So let's give it a shot. Hello Raiders, so my name is Lightning, if you don't know me. Um, we built this uh, Vintage 60X, 60S, which is oddly named 60, but is actually a 75%. Uh, but um, it has a solenoid as well as a buzzer, which we haven't tried yet. Right now we built it with Vertex V1 switches from JWK. And uh, this has DCS Rebel for um, keycaps and um, Polycarp plate and plate foam and PE foam. All right, so here it is with a solenoid in now. Alvius, oh, the densest one, the FRL. Oh, very nice. You actually built it with the um, with domes. Sounds fun.
<laughs> replace the signals of my 44, 14.4 modem with this. Yeah, so that's the solenoid. It is like a very loud typewriter. But pretty crisp sounding nonetheless. I thought it would sound a lot more hollow and stuff, but it actually sounds okay. Um, sounds like a transatlantic telegraph letting me know another unsinkable ship has sunk. <laughs> why do you even lube the staffs? Seriously, why did I even lube the staffs? I, I could have just um, gone without. All right, now let's do, let's do the, um, the buzzer. Probably loud as well. So for the buzzer, I think I just need to oh god, this is more tight. Do this. And then oh nice. Alright. So there's our buzzer now. And alright. So whoops. Around a bit. Let's do it from the side here. <clears throat> All right. Now with the beep beep buzzer, let's do this. All right. All right. Now this has a buzzer. So here we go. Fun, pretty fun, I think. Here are the mods. I don't think you can do solenoid and buzzer together. It's either or. You have to do either or. There is no way to do both. I don't think the driver can drive both at the same time. So it's choose one. Still has a pretty decent bit of flex to it because it is a polycarb plate with a lot of cuts in it. Same with the PCB, so there's quite a bit of movement. Don't give people idea metal is too scarce for that. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, um, the look of the board is actually kind of interesting. Um, I actually, so there's something about looking at from the side here that you can see the back part of the keycaps from the reflection of that little piece of polished brass kind of looks cool uh but it definitely is a yeah it kind of looks like a cyberboard a little bit right but um it is different like this part is inset and the net the effective like typing angle is actually not as steep as this it's actually like this um which i think it strikes me like a seven degree ish angle um and yeah i mean it honestly doesn't look bad um and the board itself i think you know I don't know what it would sound like without all the foam. I mean, we'd have to try to see. Um, but it, even now, it's like I think it sounds. It sounds fine. But I think there is a lot going on in this board that um, is interesting. It makes it interesting. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think it's an interesting board in general. Like it, it definitely is unique. Very chunky. 
um, <laughs> it is called Vintage 60S, but it's not a 60%. Um, has a solenoid, has a buzzer, you know, regular. Um, and then, yeah, like this, this is a hot top PCB, so I assume maybe that's why the layout's like this. Um, which is pretty standard for OEM 84 key um, layouts. A 6.25U, 1U bottom row at the right, and all that. Um, and like, yeah, this is the side profile, right? Like here's the side profile. And there's the bottom of the board designed by G Square Studio. Um, has that <laughs> 90s motorcycle gang font and everything with the muskets and yeah, yeah, it's all, all that is there. And this is the back portion too. But yeah, interesting little board or not little, but the anodizing itself, the quality of the of the case is pretty nice actually. It's a uh, pretty nice and even anodizing on it. Obviously right now it's kind of smudged by my fingerprints and stuff, but it actually doesn't like, it, it doesn't look too bad though in person. I feel like I should hate it, but I don't. Yeah, I actually thought I would like it less, but I also don't dislike it that much. <laughs> it's unique. It's very unique. Um, it's just kind of fun, you know? Um, like, I think this could be fun to like take to a meetup and be like, hey, look, look at my solenoid um, capable board. Okay, like it's, right now it has a buzzer, but I, I like the solenoid more than the buzzer itself, right? Um, so, so yeah. Yeah, I think it's just it's, it's just a fun little keyboard. Um, like I'm gonna switch over to the solenoid again, right? Oh wait, um, oh no, it's this one. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> oh, it's freaking out. It freaked out. <laughs> it freaked out for a second. Maybe it's because I changed it while it was still plugged in. Hold the key down. It doesn't, it doesn't um, do that. I think it's only maybe like if you short everything up, probably will go crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I guess it can, you can prove yourself by how fast you can tap this. that <laughs> anyway sorry for being obnoxious um, so yeah pretty cool um a bit different <laughs> um, yeah all right so let's um I guess just let's just show it off and wrap up been a pretty chill stream today. So let's just show you the board again here. Okay, there we go. There it is. 75% layout on what was named a 60. Here's a side profile once again. Some nice big bump on some the, on the bottom, so won't sink as much into your dust mat, I think. If you decide to buy it. Um, this is going to run through Clay Clock IO, starting at 385 for the standard kit. Um, there are some anodized options as well. This red is one of them. And um, yeah. This is the bottom.
And I actually do like these um, these switches, these guys here. So we use these guys here. These are called V1 switches from JWIC and Vertex. I mean, JWIC made them, and Vertex is the collab. They have these very peri purple um, toned um, stems and just black housings. They're these are factory lubed, but it looks like they also have a non lubed option. Uh, these turned out pretty nice, I think. Even with stock, it kind of sounds like lubed. Um, so I think the factory lube application is pretty good on this. Uh, 62 gram is perfect for me. So I think I would be able to purchase these and use them without modifications because I think they're pretty good for what they're worth. Um, but yeah, pretty nice. And nice color too. So those will also be um, over on Click Clock IO if you're interested in those. But all right, let's um let's wrap it up now though. Shall we go rate somebody? Let's do the thumbnail here. Let's do it here. Three, two, one, boom. All right. Let's go see who is currently streaming. So next stream um will likely be my second to last stream for the month probably because I'm going to be focusing on moving afterwards. Um, so next stream is going to be the type B from Baba Bal, uh, Paul Gali. Um, um, so that one's currently running through Canon Keys as well as Sand Keys Semi. And um, yeah, so it's a true HKB layout, 60%. And um, so I'll be building up that one. I think it's actually already built, so I'll be showcasing what's already built. I think Dutch Master built it with Gadron Mizu switches, and then I'll be building it with some other switches. Um, I think there's like Gadex and some other options. So we'll, we'll see what we what we go with. But yeah. Wait, this isn't Honkai Star Rail? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So I see... Um, I see 99 Gogo is currently streaming. I see Apiary streaming. We can go say hi. It's been a while since we've raided over there. Um, I don't think I see any other... I see some someone named Giga Cheese. Putting up some new keyword, um, an AV4, but yeah. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here though. Let's go raid Miss Avery. It's been a while. Let's just go and say hi, say hello. That's the raid message. She has a new kitty. Um, recently, uh, one of their cats, unfortunately, um, passed. And so they got a new cat. Um, so let's just go say hi, show some love. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday evening for the Type B stream. So, all right, friends. Thank you again. I'll catch you guys later. Have a good rest of your week. See ya.